above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Open thou my heart to the faith thou hast implanted in all that seek thy face. Help thou mine unbelief in my God, in my neighbor, in myself. What is faith? Faith is an attribute of the soul. It is the inner spiritual knowledge of the creative forces of the universe. As we become cognizant of the physical body through the senses, so we may become aware of the soul through the activity of its attributes. Faith may be denied or renounced until it ceases to exist within the consciousness of the physical mind. It can be acknowledged and exercised until it will remove mountains. That which is brought into consciousness through the activity of spiritual forces, manifesting in and through the spiritual force of the individual, becomes the essence of faith itself. Hence, it has been termed by many that faith, pure faith, accepts or rejects without basis of reason, beyond the can and scope of that which is perceived through that which we bring to our activity through the five senses. Faith, as defined by Barnabas, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith knows that it is already received and acts accordingly, doubting nothing. It is the builder of the seemingly impossible. It is that which has brought into manifestation all that has ever existed. God is, faith is. It is the evidence of God's promise fulfilled. Man's divine privilege is to accept, use, develop, and enjoy the fruits of faith. In the material world we often mistake confidence for faith. We are prone to depend upon our physical senses, forgetting that they are deceptive. This is not faith, but confidence. For confidence comes through the physical senses. When trials and disasters arise that are seemingly beyond our power to control, we begin to sink, and immediately in hopelessness and distress we cry out, Lord, help me, I perish. It is then that the voice speaks, O ye of little faith. Let us examine ourselves and see whether we are holding to faith or confidence. We must view spiritual things from spiritual standpoints and accept them in a spiritual way. Many say, we have faith, but they begin to explain that it applies to mental and to material things. We say, we believe, but which means there is doubt, the very opposite of faith. Remember, when we entered this material plane, we became subject to material laws. It is the failure of our senses to perceive and fully to understand these laws that brings many of us to the point where we have little real faith. There is a world before us to be understood. The mysteries of the universe, the law of love, the power of thought, and the matchless gift of faith. We stumble, we falter, even when we have the divine promise, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. With such a promise, should we not cry out, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief? There are in the experience of each entity, and in this entity especially, those mental and spiritual activities that are often taken for granted, without considering the source or without being justified by an individual experience as to the truth, or having self-conviction within as respecting same. This is what is so oft termed blind faith. But the individual experience concerning the source, the reason for the conviction, has been and is the promise and the purpose of the Christ's entering into the earth, and the promises that our individual made through and during his material ministry. Then such an experience or a fulfilling of the promise may be a part of this entity in the present, if there is the consideration given such and the drawing upon same. For as he has promised, if ye love me ye will keep my commandments, and I and the Father will come and abide with thee, and what ye ask in my name believing shall be done in the body. Then, what are the principles, the symbols, the rules, the regulations by which an entity as this is to choose, to guide self in its choices? How is the entity to know the manner in which the choice is to be made correctly? Much must be left in faith. What is faith, then? In whom, in what, have ye believed? And who is the author of that ye have believed, and do make manifest in the earth? Then, there must be that coordination, that answering of those first premises which have been indicated, because as is the mind of the entity, things that equal to the same thing are equal to one another. 
What, then, is this faith that is indicated? This one knows when one becomes aware of same. Yet may never put it into words nor tell another by words or acts, even as to what that consciousness of faith is. Yet we may see the shadow of same in what faith has prompted in the experiences of others, as it is so well expressed in the 11th of Hebrews. Or is given in that God so had faith in man as to give his son, himself, to die in the flesh. Knowing that man must come to the realization and would that he, too, must often crucify that of material desire within himself, if he would glorify his better self, or if he would prefer his brother above himself. Or, even as a man, Abraham, the son of faith, the author of faith, offered or was willing to offer his only son, his physical heir. Knowing that there must be a purpose from that inner voice as to that command. As to that in the financial here we have presented that as has been given. There are those that guide, direct in the quieter moments when the self, the ego seeks and listens, and well that the faith be kept. Faith, meaning that evidence of things hoped for and experienced by him who trusts in the action of activity and self towards that given from the universe or the energies of the cosmic forces. Any other advice that would be helpful at this time? Keep to those purposes, those attitudes of helpful hopefulness, that the opportunities accorded may be used in service to others. Such an attitude kept in the mental forces will bring the renewing of the faith in the divine, which is the heritage of every soul. Thus the injunction to the entity, do inscribe and know thy ideal, the source of thy hope, the source of thy fears, the source of thy love, the source of that which brings and creates faith in the experience of the entity. What is faith? Evidence. What is evidence? Assurance. One that should not place too much confidence in others. While this is not of a fault, yet the nature of this entity finding there was fault loses faith in self. Hence the greater forces should be exercised in placing that faith, that confidence, that purpose, in him, the giver of all good and perfect gifts. Just what method should I use in healing? As has been given, and as has been the experience of self, in raising the consciousness in the silence of those that the body or self would aid, even as it is done in self. As the experiences have been, so does the confidence grow in self in that direction. Confidence, then, is of the material or of the physical sense, while faith is an attribute of the soul and spiritual body. Any further advice regarding a change of name? There has been given the way, the manner. When this is conformed to, it must be in self a proof of the activity or an arousing of that interest, purpose, aim, desire. To be sure, if such is gone at a willy-nilly or half-hearted way or manner, doubting, then the same will be the result. Know in self the amount of effort, the amount of faith, activity, that is to be builded, that is possible to be builded through that given thee. While there should be a reason for the faith that rises in the mental or the spiritual aspects of any soul's experience, to doubt at all times makes for rather confusing influences in the entity's experience with others. As we find, much might be given as to the characteristics of its abilities in this experience. Yet, add little to these if ye would keep in the way that is pleasing to thy Maker. For the entity is one who had used its abilities and its opportunities to offer, to induce, to direct its fellow man in the way that leadeth to a more perfect understanding of the purpose of the experiences of an entity in the material world. That there have been many problems and many questionings is true. Yet when the entity has allowed or does allow itself to meditate upon the principles of the prompting which come from its study, its application of the law of the Lord which is manifested in the precepts, the commandments, the psalms and the promises of Jesus, little has been the fear of what the man force has to offer as to disturbing factors in the earth. Then, as would be given, keep that faith. Keep the precepts which are the promptings. For these are in keeping with not only the tenets of the entity, but of the tenets of the book itself. For the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, and the greater the stress, the greater the impress of the purposes upon the life of the master, greater may be the joys which are found. Do not let those things which may not in the present be understood weary thy soul, but know that sometime, somewhere, ye, too, will understand. Keep the faith.